podcast partner uh, is in Dead and Company. O'Teal, uh, I don't remember his last name, but uh, there he's in the band with John Mayer. So he's done the podcast with O'Teal and Mike. And he used to hang at the cellar all the time. And then one time, Gnome even made me sit down and have an awkward conversation with him and Katy Perry. I mean... I, that's the, I used your name. Yeah. I went and I talked to the talent. I said, he, know, he and Big J know each other oh, very well from the comedy, the comedy club. Yes, comedy cellar. You think he likes that, if I do that when he comes in? Oh, John Mayer, dude, good to see you. I make the whole dumb face and everything. And I don't see myself as a twink. Did you ever see him live? No, I'm not really familiar with him. He rips, dude. I'm not a big. Like, I know he's a great. I'm not a big on the music, but man, that guy can play the guitar. Yeah. He once uh, sang a Pearl Jam song to me, serenaded me. Why are you not out there in the lobby, dude, dragging him in here? We have so many connections to John Mayer. It's nonstop. Yeah, because him and Pete Corielli were friends. War friends. Christine's trying to nag him. She's like, I bet he's not that cool. I'm like, oh, here you go. She's leaving with him. <laughs> hey, Christine, you want to come on my full ride, my Ferrari? Shibby, shop, shibby, shop. Oh. I uh, uncheck Jay, dude. What should we do? You guys want to get some gay porn up on the screen? If John Mayer walks in and we're working completely on unchecked Jay? <laughs> well, I told Lewis and I went out and asked the talent, and I'll tell you this, Jay. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the same woman that got me Barry Manilow. Yeah. Um, they weren't, they didn't seem as enthusiastic. Yeah. Because I, I said that, and he said, I got it. Oh, really? And then we were about to walk away, and I turned back and I said, we're in Studio 3, in case he does. You they didn't bet. even ask. You yeah. bet. Oh, no, they dude, had never totally. asked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I walked away thinking, here he yeah. is. He's not here coming. Here he is. Man. He's actually not coming. Top of my life. Hello. Was, were we right about uh, our feeling when we walked <laughs> after we asked? Yes, yes. What no, he, he hasn't come out of studio yet. He was supposed to be out at 5. So there's so still, still, still time. You know, so there's still waiting. time. Still time. Jacob, go let someone know, though. Somebody go let somebody know that we were on for two hours. I was like, I'm going to come in whenever. There's a pick set, too, that we were kind of avoiding. Someone was waiting in the hallway like a... Oh, to please sign this? What? No, more like to... Uh, a buffer? A someone buffer, to make yes. sure Keep... people... Uh, yeah, like yes. a buffer. Oh, a pick set. I think you meant a set of guitar picks. Yeah. No, like setting a pick, like a human pick. Got you. So hmm. we kind of did like keystone capers. Like we were like dot, like going in and out of hallways and shit. <laughs> well, Black Lou, you have a low center. You're built like a, a fucking fullback, dude. Damn right. You go in there, wipe through that pick, first of all. <laughs> Pancake fucking fold that asshole. I mean, we can go back out and try. Yeah. Who, who do you talk to? I only know our talent people. Are you texting someone now? I am going to text Jim just get to text see. And say it's like, hey, we'd love yeah. to have him come in. We both... Have no, he sang a song to Lou before. I did not know that. DJ Lou yep. said he was serenaded by him. What Pearl Jam song did he sing to you? It was called Chloe Dancer. It was actually a Mother Love Bone song. And when he sang to me, I went underneath the console and I hid because it was so awkward, but also very beautiful. Well, I'll, I'll John Mayer Pearl Jam you. Hello. I'm not feeling it. Is that good? No. That doesn't make you hide under the... No. So it's not awkward to hide under the desk? Jam <laughs> Hey, what did it stop? Jam spoken classy. Jam spoken classy. Whoa, still alive. Whoa, still alive. He ran. Slip it on, baby, don't put your bone, paper concrete. Should we go back out there or are you good? Yo, you Mike, you can't it? go back out there. You have to talk on air. That's what I thought. Go Uncheck wanna... Jay. Christine was two clicks from putting gay porn up on the screen. Oh, there he is. Short-haired Johnny. Oh, he's shibby shabbing. Short-haired Johnny. What's he looking now? Yeah. Long-haired Johnny. Does he have long hair? <laughs> Fashionably so, long. You know. Yeah. Was, it, it just falls beautifully on the Perfectly. nape of his neck. Of course. <laughs> he's yeah. so famous. It just slightly uh, goes over his, what is some sort of... Uh, just like leather necklace. Yeah, It's not yeah. really a... A Johnny Depp necklace. Or it's thin. Isn't it great? Like, there's a point of wealth that you can get to where it's cooler. Like, it looks dumb if you have, like, a big, like, oh, my necklace costs whatever. It's awesome when you're... Everything else around you is so great that your jewelry can just be... 
Oh, this just means something to me. It's just a little thing on a small, yeah. thin chain. They're like, oh, this is a piece of uh, rawhide that a uh, Navajo medicine man gave me once yeah, when I was yeah, visiting yeah. with Robert Redford. Yeah. They all have a story like that. This is a little, uh, it's a little container that has uh, Taylor Swift's thatch hairs in it. <laughs> You just get to that point where you just start looking like a mix between Keith Richards and a pirate. <laughs> didn't Which you want to go? Depp. At one point, didn't you want to go necklaces, heavy necklaces? Over quarantine, we said we were all going to come out. None of us committed to it. We were all going to come out with a different look. Some of us did it during the quarantine and didn't commit to it. Black uh, DJ Lou was rocking straight up Kangos for a while. Mm. I still am. And then, uh, yeah, we've gone back to baseball hat pretty consistently. Well, it depends what I'm doing. That's fair. This is your work hat? Yes. But the Kango hat became a real, uh, that was a real look for him. I still think Luke could probably pull off the small brim fedora. Dude. No. Let me tell you something. Sometimes people pull off a hat. You know who, uh, T-shirt oh. Kevin? T-shirt Kevin. Uh, who, uh, also, thank you, T-shirt Kevin. T-shirt Kevin's for, awesome. For uh, bringing awesome stuff to me this weekend. He made a shirt that's, uh, it's great. It says Kevin Hart. Uh, Jay and it's a it's just uh, all the texts that I sent to Kev that he never responded to oh. like it's like a stand <laughs> like a stand That's great. but T-shirt Kevin uh, in the time I've known him started rocking a, a Rocky hat uh, correct, a Rocky one hat and it works and correct me if I'm wrong isn't he also rocking suspenders as well did he have suspenders and a T-shirt did I not thought? see suspenders no. I thought maybe the first night he did no, but he looks like a, he looks like he runs a cool uh, rock club. Yeah, yeah. T-shirt Kevin's got it. He does all Bobby's merch also and Bonfire. Merch he's a also. he's a super cool dude. Yeah. Right this second. He's okay. a super cool guy. Oh wow, nice. It did work out. Hey. Hey, hey what's up, man? John Mayer, everybody. Good to see you. Good to see you. What a surprise. What's up, my man? Good to, Good to see you, buddy. Just, tell, just showed everyone the clip about the fat guy breaking the chair, which I saw two days ago. And just, this oh, really? The best clips I've ever seen. <laughs> your, your wordplay is insane. What you a gift. Fatly went through a chair. Yeah. <laughs> Sitting on a pile of broken chairs. That's my shit. Like, small little... Just, just funky language is my favorite thing in the world. Yeah, I, we, me and John uh, had to, met a few times when we were working back. You were working back to Comedy Cell. You're oh, I used to watch him at the cell, Comedy Cell, and he was so good that I said to myself, "I'm going to do that too." <laughs> <laughs> and it almost ruined my career. So thank you. We had a chat. It almost ruined your career. I, O'Teal and I co-host the podcast. Yeah, no, I did you, the, the podcast with you guys during and Billy. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. was so great. Do you are you as interested in like like? drug talk as they are uh the power of mushrooms and i mean can, can you are you oh yeah mike's all spacey on you, that so shit. you do you do you are i do yeah i've been doing ketamine recently and yeah mushrooms but i don't have to talk about it i'd much rather do them <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> yes. but if they want to talk i'll talk yes. for sure yeah, yeah talking about drugs is only cool for people who have actually done the right drugs, yeah. well you know what i loved about you being on was that like you and i were geeking out about watching old interviews of Jerry Garcia and yes. Bob Weir and how yes. they would kind of like set each other and, and, up. And, 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 and also like what I wouldn't say on the air is that Bobby would just, Bobby was all effort. Wait, and hang on, John. This is on the air. <laughs> Bobby was all effort. <laughs> and Jerry was just naturally funny. Right, right. Bobby would like really pedal. Yep. And Jerry just had the joke. It just it was, had, was naturally funny. Yeah. He was... He was <laughs> and Jerry was just naturally funny. Right, right. Bobby would like really pedal. Yep. And Jerry just had the joke. It just it was, had, was naturally fun. Yeah. He, was, he was Dave's speed. Yep. And then there yeah. were a couple of those when he nailed it, when they were like, has fa has fame changed you? And he's like, now when I get a pistachio that's closed, those are, I don't even bother. That's, but that's from a <laughs> uh, like a press conference or something. Right. That right. was great. Yeah. But then you could tell Bob went and were like, you know when people bring their things in? Sure. And you can tell yes. they brought them in and they don't work as well? <laughs> and then Jerry was just funny bones. Oh, that's the anyway. best. Are you, uh, are you out of the comedy biz altogether? You don't get the itch at all anymore? No, I don't get the itch. I, I understand comedy, really. I'm like an acting teacher yeah, who yeah. would never be in a movie. I understand <laughs> comedy. I can give notes. I can give you the pieces of a joke. But they won't buy... They just don't buy I'm me a, doing it. You know, when you, I, before you were doing stand-up comedy, and I think we've talked about this before a long time ago, but I loved... I thought the funniest thing... I was on the road somewhere and saw... I believe it was MTV, where you went around 
uh, in a costume yes. at your own... I had a pilot on VH1, and I think I was yeah. the first guy to disguise myself and talk to fans. It was, I mean, but it was oh, so yeah. funny because he'd yeah. go up to, like, the guys who definitely were there for their girlfriends kind of yeah. thing. Was, he, like, sought them out. It was so funny. Yeah, I was in a bear costume making fun <laughs> of me. And then you would see on Kimmel, Drake dressed up like someone yeah, yeah, was in yeah. So I, I do think I was the first person to talk to my own fans who didn't know it was me and kind of make fun of Pioneer, me. Pioneer, dude. Yeah. I mean, I'll take little, little things. Little things. <laughs> Did you ever see someone do a joke and you go, that joke wouldn't exist if it weren't for me? Oh, no. <laughs> I never had that. I wish. <laughs> I wish I felt that good about my comedy. You, is there a ripoff of you out there that every time you look at them, you go, that guy is just a pure ripoff of me and I can't stand it? No, it's. I don't see that at all, but it is funny like to see um, like the people that, I, that do have... You know, kind of thing. People that are getting successful now that I'm like, oh, I know their origin. Yes. Like thing for sure. I would never see it myself. I don't think. You did. You did a joke about Michael Richards once, and I think about all the time. Yeah. That the worst thing is probably him walking around with other racists going, "Hey, man." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, just I, you probably haven't done that joke in forever, and I just I won't ever forget it. Like the idea that he now has people going, "Hey, man." Yeah, it's, right it's the worst thing. Some people are like, "I get it, dude." Like, no, it was. <laughs> it was a joke. Hey, I just thought that. Was, I, I think about. It's funny what jokes you hear and you think about. Yeah. Years later. That was Hell like, yeah, man. Anyway, I'm well, sure dude, you guys have to go back. On dude, that, thank you. It's good to see you, man. So, so much, man. I'm a super fan. Good Let's to see you in person. It. Congratulations, nice man. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, Excited got, for the station. I got a channel. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I got a channel. Uh, we'll promote. Please, when you come back in, come on and promote. And, uh, Let please. me write my su career suicide note first. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then I'll come on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good to see you, man. Good to thank see you, John. Man. Thank see you so much. Now, I do have a legality question. He clearly had no idea we were on the air. Uh, what do we do about that? <laughs> I mean, it's out there. They didn't tell me we were a live show. I said we were doing a show. I know, but I'm, he definitely, he said I wouldn't say this if we were on the air at one point, and then he said, I'm sure you guys have to get back on the air. Uh, you said we're leaving. on the air. Who did? I th I th he said, did. Oh, I did, but I don't think he, I, I think he had like a, <laughs> <laughs> sure. I mean, we have our things on. I know, but he was nowhere near a microphone. But Christine did crank it towards him, which is hilarious. And then he leaned in. Yeah, no, perfect. but when he leaned in, he said, the, the thing he said before that was, I definitely wouldn't say this uh, on the air, but, and I went, this, this is on the air. And then I think he was like, oh, yeah, right. And you know, he started saying it yeah, into but the I, microphone. I don't think it was anything horrible. No, no, I don't think he said anything horrible at all. I'm just, first of all, he came in here and complimented my comedy by joke several times. Yeah. So, ooh la la, Aren't I you get glad it, that's on the air? Aren't you glad I that's get on it, the ladies. You're like, yo, John, shut up. Can you say dog belly? <laughs> oh, dude, put on some of that again. <laughs> I gotta say. PJ, you are hilarious. <laughs> Lewis and I uh, pulled a you and, and bashed the talent people before because we didn't believe <laughs> oh, yeah. in our own power. <laughs> What'd you do? Jim? Not bash them, but we said they, they're not going to do it. Yeah. They don't. They he don't, said you they, weren't, they were dismissed. They, yeah. I mean, listen, you know what you saw, though. They were like, yeah, yeah, we got it. Uh, but just let them know these guys know them. Mm, yeah, totally. Totally. Yeah. So we lost faith in ourselves, like like his tradition on the, on the show, mm -hmm. and he walked in. <laughs> you know what, sometimes that's almost like a fun sales tactic <clears throat> to kind of play like down. And then yeah. they go like, oh, no, no, it's cool. You know yeah, what I mean? Sure. You're like, oh, kicking the dirt. Christine. Like, I'm sorry, I'll blow this. But His dick was right I, near you. Did you feel it? Yeah, it was so hot. You felt it? <laughs> it was hot? You could feel the heat? And I could feel the heat coming she was off trying, of His dick's like she an trying Amish to fireplace. You were trying to neg earlier. She's like, he's this <laughs> oh, and no, he's that. he's very sexy. She was like, he, of course. <laughs> hey, John Mayer. What a he's beautiful. What a, one, what what a, a 180. Lady. Holy shit. 180 wow. degrees. She is, I knew she was full of shit. She's, she's downright like giddy. a candle right now. Look at her. Absolutely, dude. Look I think her. I've signed something like DJ Luke, give her a joke, slick, like give her a slick test. <laughs> All of a sudden, she just has a pack of cigarettes on her. She's like, Woof. She goes, wow, dude. Even just seeing him. Oh, man. Being around his energy. I've yeah. seen him before. How's he but smell, he's Christine? Very sexy. She he's just so nice and so talented, and I bet he tells really funny stories. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, dude. Yeah. I go, hey, you, you did our podcast. He's like, yeah, I know. That's hilarious. Comedy almost ruined my life. I forgot he was eating shit for like. No. Yeah. He's like, I'm a massive star. <laughs> well, he's just so under the the public eye. So, his open mic level of starting. Yeah. When he hasn't done it at all, is being watched by like TMZ's like. Did John Mayer say blah, blah, blah? <laughs> Hamas was right? 
Yeah. And he goes, yeah, he was trying to make like a crazy joke, you know? Did John Mayer really steal a handicapped parking spot? Or Damn, was that man. just open mic material? I gotta be honest with you, man. Those are the kind of moments I wish I took a picture of. You know, <laughs> in our house, Mike... Some of our family holiday traditions are really the simplest and most enjoyable. Trimming the tree, making cookies, and prepping a great, great holiday meal. Well, each year there's new memories created and moments that are really special, so we capture them on our cameras, and then we share them with family who can't be with us thanks to Aura Digital Picture Frame. It's the perfect gift for people you love. This is not the digital picture frame you remember from years ago. No USB or SD cards, no hassle at all. It's easy to use and even easier to set up. The app walks you through just a few steps and boom, you're ready to go. Now grandma can see just how well her famous recipes turned out. And our parents right now, Mike, would be looking at a picture of us with John Mayer if we just thought to say, Hey, can we take a picture with you? Hey, can we take a picture with you? Oh, we forgot to say the whole, like, oh, remember you serenaded Lou under the table? And that sounds like I'm saying they had sex under a table. Yes. Yeah, remember the time you serenaded Lou under a table with Pearl Jam? <laughs> remember when you serenaded his dick hard? Yeah, until he gave you his Pearl Jam? That's what I call cum. <laughs> Pearl Jam. Isn't that what it is? No. No, it's not that. It's I've never not. thought that before in my life, but now that, that I've fantastic. said it, I think it's fantastic that Pearl Jam should be yeah. what a word for cum. Hashtag Pearl Jam, everybody. Yeah. And, and Big J said it first. Copyright. Copyright. Hobo copyright. Christine, mail it to me. <laughs> right, uh, right. Pearl Jam is come. And Certified. Just, never just open it. Just mail it to me. And please, never, let's never open it. Just put it away. Are we still in the read? Pearl Jam. Yes. Great. Edit. Lou. Go ahead. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> you said... <laughs> We're not even on the air yet. He started coming in the middle of a spot. What? Don't worry. We, we did the scissor. Okay. Oh, we did the scissor move? We did so the scissors. Good. Okay. Good, good. As long as we hit the scissors. Everyone, Grandma can see how good her famous recipes turned out. You can give the gift this holiday by visiting AuraFrames.com, and you get $30 off their best-selling frames with the code BONFIRE. These frames sell out quickly, though, so get yours before they're gone. That's AuraFrames.com, A-U-R-A, Frames.com, with promo code BONFIRE. Terms and conditions do apply. Chris, uh, yeah, that did start to take a left, Lou. I, I do apologize for that. Christine, I was stuck in the moment. Christine uh, I, is a giddy girl. <coughs> Look at her. Oh, she my God. She has a God. glow. Yeah. <laughs> she might go <laughs> Jill. <laughs> she might, go, she might go Jill on the break. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that uh, him and I would be good friends if we got to know each other. Yeah? Like, if we got to hang. Yeah. You love that so much. Yeah, well. You just want to be around him. <laughs> I just like, I like to <laughs> talk like, gear and shit. Is he into drugs and dogs? Just dogs. <laughs> no, it was funny. He came on the podcast and literally, like, when it got into, like, the power of psychedelics and all this, you know, mm -hmm. he was just kind of like, mm, whatever. Because it was so a drummer funny. from the Grateful Dead, O'Teal, and I, and him. Yeah. On Zoom. Which is hard as fuck. Yeah. Because, you know, like, it's hard to do that with, you know. Yeah, it's a lot of people already. Yeah, and one of them's 80 and has taken acid 10 times a day for every day for the re his whole life. <laughs> no, he has the same energy to me as, like, when uh, SDR show, we did a Zoom with Brandon Boyd from mm -hmm. Incubus. Yeah. And I was just like, <laughs> like, his whole, I'm like, whatever, you're, you're great. <laughs> um, but it's funny because he's got the thing, everything about him when you watch his thing is so hateable, but he's just gorgeous and talented, and you realize that's all it is. Like, I'm hating him because he's nailing it. Because he's perfect and beautiful. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Brandon Boyd, he was everything He was everything I was thinking. Brandon Boyd was uh, no shoes, linen pants, oh. uh, button-down shirt, but, you know, flowy and sleeves open. You could tell he's, like, thin still. His fantastic long hair around his modely face. It was. He smelled like the changing of the seasons. He's sitting like by. He's. <laughs> yeah. He's sitting by like a sunned window. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, of course. Sun's coming through, so he's kind of got a glow around. He laughed at everything I said. Oh, he was beautiful. I felt like I was really kind of like jiving with John mm -hmm. when we were doing the podcast, almost kind of giving him like. These guys These and their losers, mushrooms. Right? John, yeah, is like, this you? Shab from Fabersham. John, are you this guy? Hey, John, hey, John I, have, I have a grill here. If you're ever in Connecticut, I'd love to have you over. <laughs> How do you like your steak? Medium well? I trust you'll be bringing the lady. <laughs> yeah, he's just a fun... I walked. I watched him walk into the cellar one night, and it was... He was in like... Jacob, did you get to smell his hands? I, not me, but I don't know who's more in love right now, Christine or Lou. Black Lou? He just showed me 
Uh, hit the picture you got. With yeah, him. Black Lou's. You got a Black, Black He's Lou's, giddy. I did, yeah. He's giddy. Black Lou's literally doing the step oh. forward, step back, <laughs> See, step forward, do... step back. Like, he's, like, like you're, you're having pissy pants feelings. Go ahead, show Jay. Can you do, <laughs> all you have to do is just impose our heads on your body for all of us. And that'll be the I'll fire a Christmas card. Hey. Oh, wow. Damn, you're cheesing hard. He walked into the cellar <laughs> one night in like sweatpants that like you'd wear to like walk a dog in the rain yeah you know what i mean just paint on it like whatever and you would have like a, a greek god walked in the room yeah. like wives literally like stabbed their husbands in the neck with forks and like girlfriends just like everyone just like gravitated towards them you and see, guys were like i can't be mad at her yeah dude christine didn't even she was just looking at him and she just moved the microphone like over she was like <laughs> i stood next to him for scale yeah it was, it was tough for me so the whole, I had to keep the door open, and I did not want to stand next to that god. Yeah, he really makes He's you look so a much bitch. better looking in person. He's a good looking man. He's good looking. He's tall. Plays he's, a mean guitar. That's the worst. I mean, he's like beautiful and extremely tall, and this is going to take at least two weeks for me to work off. Likeable. <laughs> Damn. Brilliantly talented. In shape. Great voice. From Connecticut. <laughs> He's so, he wants you to take his music so seriously, he makes a wretched face when he sings with his beautiful voice. I also feel like if He you, has to throw that to you that way. I yeah. mean, the, the thing that's so captivating about him, too, is that he came in here and immediately complimented you, like, two or three times, and then asked you deep, profound, who's out there doing you right now? What a fucking, you were like, uh... And I wanted you to be like, I don't know, a whole genre is fucking stealing from me. A whole generation's doing he crowd work. The, he said, uh... <laughs> you remember my joke for my special? That's nutty. Jay, you and don't you went, even remember that joke. You go, it's, he goes, it's things like that. He goes, I like the, yeah, I like the au jus on the, on, yeah. the, on the word. Oh, give me a little taste. Give me, a little give me some taste of that dirty stuff. Give me a little horseradish on that. First meat. one's free. I'm gonna have to pay you for the next you one. Went, you went. Ah. <laughs> 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 you, I got a new one out. I go. You like that one? You like that? Yeah, you like that one. <laughs> I got a new one out. Have you seen it? You want it? Look at Christine just put up video of him sh shredding to watch. Oh, it's a Christmas. Not even good quality. She's just so turned on. She can't stop. Yeah. I've never been Asa in the room with that good-looking a person before. Oh, yeah, T-shirt Kevin. This is the shirt he made, which I don't know if he's putting up for Sarah. It's so funny. Should I tweet it out? I'll tweet it out. It says Kevin Hart J, and the Kevin the K is backwards like Eminem. So you know it's the Stan reference, it's a, and it's all of the text that Kev didn't answer. This is a good one. <laughs> good luck with the new movie, brother. It looks hilarious. One's just, hey, buddy. Oh. Hey, Kev, it's Big J. Is this still your number? That's how my fucking, favorite. How fucking fun are the Sixers? <laughs> yeah, that's my, my favorite one is, is this your number? It's called the Degenerates. I like it hurts more now if this is your number. Oh. <laughs> I want to know the order, too, because if, hey, Kev, it's Big J, this your number, and then like seven more come after that, dude. that makes that one even more sad. God damn it, that's so funny. Hey, buddy. You get a chance to watch the special. Really? Yeah. Why have we not? By the way, that's the creepiest one. Really? Why have we not caught up at all? <laughs> it's like some Kevin Hart. I don't know you, man. <laughs> Good luck with the movie. Who brother. are you? <laughs> we well, out for five minutes out. when we were kids. <laughs> you think every show they go, and if this guy shows up to the door, you fucking let us Yo, know, and you get security. He should do this for like literally, like when a dude won't leave a chick alone, or a chick, <laughs> chick won't leave a dude alone, and you can like goof someone and be like oh I got you a t-shirt for Christmas and it's just like hey you up like I'm so sorry I'm such a dick like, there are here's the thing though about the text this is hilarious there are responses like in between it's not like 11 texts no response they're no, just no, no, no. a little more sparse no 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 these he, are all in a row these are all, no no these aren't all in a row these are just ones that he didn't respond to oh okay okay <laughs> but I mean yes no I'll tell you what dude when you can check out my Netflix half hour then the next one was definitely you get a chance to watch the special yet Next thing, it's called the Degenerates. <laughs> yeah. It hurts me now if this is your After number. After that, hey, Kev, it's Big J. Is this your number? It hurts more now if this is your number. Oh, man, Jay. Really, why have we not caught up at all? <laughs> <laughs> Please tell us I'm a What a great shirt, dude. Who made yeah, it? T-shirt Kevin. He's so good. Uh, the guy does cool. the merch and makes, like, the, made all the... He I, makes need all one of the I need that one. Uh, yeah, no doubt. They run small. <clears throat> Dude, just to sure let you know. It's fucking... God damn it, that's funny. Dude, another city that we were in that fucking bullets rang out when we were there. Jesus Christ, man. Another city, dude. I'm the death bringer. Uh, me and Mike now, Indianapolis. Maybe it's Mike, I guess. I think uh, it's Young D. It might be Young Dylan also. Yeah. But me, Mike, and Dylan, two times on Indianapolis, shooting on the street, right? 
We I mean, were it, like, it happened 20, 30 yards from his tops. Right in front of us, yeah. Um, we just didn't see it happen. We heard the shot and saw everybody run. We saw the aftermath. But um, the guy was like right there. Yep. If we just stood there while everybody ran, we would have seen that he was there from the get-go. Um, you went, those aren't fireworks. <laughs> when I turned to you. <laughs> yeah. And then... Uh, this week, and were... then this week, they had the tree lighting in Cleveland. Look up the story. See if there's any follow up to this because there was it wasn't the news. Two teenagers. Um, oh, two teenagers. Sorry, what? John Mayer wants to come back? No, I just want to. Uh, we have definitely the first half hour didn't happen because you I didn't was know giving, he was in the air. I was giving myself credit for this brilliant move. Like yeah. I was going to get John. I got John Mayer in here. Let, I want to say thank you to Mark Zito. Oh, okay, thank you, Mark Zito. He got he got John in Mayer the town's here. apartment. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Mark thank Zito. You, Mark. Thank you. I love Thanks, you, Mark. Mark. <laughs> I feel good, dude. He made Thanks, Christine Mark. wet. He made me feel great about my comedy. Yeah. I didn't. I tell you what, when I said he remembered me from the thing, I thought maybe he'd remember me from the comedy cellar. Maybe. He is one of these guys. He that still he, watches my new thing. Dude, the inside of his head is beautiful too, not just the outside. He I has a compartmentalized. He's made me feel great about myself. <laughs> <laughs> what was the date of the shooting? Give me one to play that one more time. It's making. Me- it's making me feel great about myself. <laughs> That's my favorite thing. I, like I miss that drop so much. It's making me, I feel it's making like me feel such great an about idiot. myself. Why? So I texted Jim. I said, I don't know my own power. For... <laughs> That's <laughs> what I you mean, texted? Jokingly. I said That's it great. jokingly. I said, I don't know my own power. Barry Manilow with now John Mayer. <laughs> he texts back, thank Mark Zito. <laughs> 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 I don't know my own power could be followed by so many things. He goes, help me bury this prostitute. Uh, this is a lot of responsibility. What do I do with this power? Do I wield it for good or evil? I, no, you nothing. thank Mark Zito. <laughs> oh, man. So he's got his own station now, John Mayer. He's got his own channel on Sirius. Is that what's going on? That's, That's what's going on, and it's going to be all the songs that he... Uh, he, 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 he likes. He uh, is going to, what do you call that? <clears throat> curate. Call curate. But then he's going to every now and then probably sing from the top of his lungs. Shab of some fun land. Great. So he tells me back. We were literally, we stayed at a place that, uh, man, that hotel is like, it's like being in a snow globe. It's fucking, let me tell you something, and I mean this. I love that club. Yeah. I love the location of the hotel. I don't know what I would change because it's probably dangerous to walk further than you have to walk from hotel to club. Yeah. Zombie, zombie town. It's and then leaving. It's just great. You can go across the street. That's I love all of that. But that hotel is fucking bananas. It's amazing. It was a mall. Right? Every time we go, it's an. It it's is a mall, but it's a, a terrible mall. <laughs> yeah, there's like the world's it's largest a, post office. It's got a pizza place, a post <laughs> Holy office. Holy shit, dude! There was a wedding. There's a wedding. It's so weird. Every time we're there, there's a wedding. So it's almost like you explained it perfectly. It's like being on the inside of a cruise ship. So there's people that can go out and look over down the railing into like a common area. They have prom yeah. stuff there. They have whatever, right? That's what it looks like, right? So we're, wa- <laughs> we're walking. We put this out. We're walking on the second floor. Oh, dude, that was just hilarious. There's a wedding happening down on that bottom floor. And what? Like, by the way, those rooms there, which we used to get. Yeah, I got that once. Those rooms are better over there. They have a living room. They do, but also there's... But you have to hear the definitely the stuff of, yeah. And also the weird guy that was watching the wedding. <laughs> that was it, yeah. So we're overlooking this thing, looking at the wedding, and there was just a guy. What was he eating? A bag of, like, a bag of, like, three hot doritos, yeah. dude. Just looking over at a wedding. It's like people's finest moment. We're watching. We watched the entire bridal party go, like, two <laughs> by two by two yeah. down the aisle. And people clapping and cheering. And just some guy looking over eating Doritos. Like, ah. He's like in Corona boxers. Goes, like, oh, yeah, that just goes back into his fucking room. <laughs> it's just such a non-wedding thing that you want. Like He's in the pictures in the back, like, wiping Dorito cheese yeah, on his someone shirt. goes, oh, I bet this is an expensive, like, nice place. Oh, my, my dad. My dad goes, oh, yeah, no, they had a thing. I think it's, like, an expensive place to have a wedding. I go, this is a trash place to have a wedding. Yeah. He's like, yeah. no, they do it up nice. I go, I'm not saying they don't do it up nice as far as, like, the aesthetically pleasing. If this was an abandoned this, what yeah. a cool place. Oh, it'd be a great level go, of Tony the, Hawk. I go, the problem is, behind the, the ceremony, there is an active pizza place. <laughs> <laughs> there really is. It is. Uh, yeah. there's, a, there's, there's a chocolatier. You could, like, post a letter during a prom there. <laughs> an ice cream sandwich <laughs> shop. A fucking, uh, you know, your uh, two stores from a Potbelly's. 
a chiropractor. That look, that's all kind of skincare shit. Yeah. Now. These are the active stores. Now, here's the thing. I had breakfast. Nobody in goes into them. I don't know how they exist. Yeah. I went in there for breakfast. What do you mean? It's just an empty. It's, it's, it's no weird. one goes. It, there's never just like foot traffic in that mall. It's it looks like oh. that. Yeah. At all times, but there's functioning places in there. And I took a picture that makes me really look like a Ansel Adams, but it's just the place is so picturesquely beautiful. You can't not take a good picture, but no one's there. Like there's like That's five a skylight people. over the entire. Oh, thing. it's gorgeous, dude. The place is fucking beautiful. But and it especially, is a retarded place to it's make a, either a hotel. Or a wedding hall, or a mall. Yeah. It shouldn't be a mall hotel wedding spot. <laughs> All three, yeah, really. You know what's so funny too? There, you know what's so funny too is there's like a, a, a locked off exit that you come down these grand stairs. Oh yeah. Where like the bride comes down, and who comes down but Jay? Me, I saunter. <laughs> I could cigarette out, hanging out of his mouth, getting ready to come. It's like here comes the bride, and it was Jay. Yeah. Hey pop. Hey pop. Um, this this building is really and Pickwick and Frolic. It's really like the silk hat on the pig that is Cleveland, though. It's so fucking. It's bad. such a dump. Otherwise, it's so bad. It's awful. And I've and by all accounts, uh, white and black people I've talked to out there, by all accounts, it's scary ghetto and and scary white trash. It's like no in between. <laughs> he said anyone that's Cleveland money is fucking in the suburbs, at, way suburbs. Yeah, yeah like. Like Buffalo, <laughs> <laughs> two hours away. Did you ever see those hastily made Cleveland tourism videos? That's one of my favorite yeah. things. It's ever. the greatest thing. Have you ever ever. seen those, Jacob? Mm-hmm. Oh my God, it's brilliant. Christine, play them both for Dude, Jacob. Mike it's Polk's, great audio. It's just brilliant. He's it's a funny. he's a Cleveland comedian. Did these a million years ago. A million now. years ago. It's so long, but the it's just. It's making fun of Cleveland. They're called Cleveland tourism videos. Now, I might be wrong, but I think he was supposed to do some type of like comedy festival in Cleveland, and they pulled the plug last minute, and he did this as kind of like a is thank that what it you. Was? Yeah, you play this for Jacob. This this is just the best. Start from the beginning. Fun time. Let's see what we recognize. Fun times in Cleveland today. <laughs> Cleveland, <laughs> come on down to Cleveland town, everyone. Come and look at both of our buildings. <laughs> Buy some food that's prepared near the street. Who knows, you might even see this guy. You should come on down to West 6th Street. It's the perfect place if you're a douchebag. Watch the poor people all wait for buses. Who the fuck still uses a payphone? Here's the place where there used to be industry. This train is carrying jobs out of Cleveland. Cleveland leads the nation in drifters. Here's a statue of Moses Cleveland. He's the guy who invented Cleveland. Yeah! There's a bunch of seagulls at the end. The second one's great, too. And yeah, they play the second one. The second That's one's better. Great. Yeah, I like the beginning. He goes, more times in Cleveland. He gets a little seager on the beginning. This is so good. Fun times in Cleveland again. Still Cleveland. Come on down to Cleveland town, everyone. Under construction since 1868. <laughs> See our river that catches on fire. It's so polluted that all our fish have AIDS. We see the sun almost three times a year. This guy has at least two DUIs. Flats look like a Scooby-Doo ghost town. Don't slow down in East Cleveland or you'll die. Our economy's based on LeBron James. Buy a house for the price of a VCR. Our main export is crippling depression. We're so retarded that we think this is art. It could be worse though, at least we're not Detroit. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We're, we're not, not Detroit. Detroit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love those so, so much. Funny. What's his name? Give him a shot. What's his name? Mike Polk. Mike Polk. Yeah, dude. It's so good. It's, those are classically two of the funniest things ever on the Oh, they're just so good. And that's early internet, you could buy too. The price for the ha- for, you could buy a house for the price of the VCR. Our biggest export is crippling depression. <laughs> Go to uh, the story of what happened when me and Mike killed those kids. Oh, yeah. It's a 13-year-old and a 15-year-old that were shot. Yeah. Was there a, a follow-up story at all? What's, like, the newest news story? Um, This is from... Wait. Updated November 27th, so updated yesterday. Okay, I'm sure this is good. 13. The 13-year-old suffered minor injuries. Uh, the 15-year-old is listed still in critical condition. Uh, he says, two juveniles are in custody in connection to the shooting. Last night, what I should have been an evening of celebration ended in tragedy when two juveniles were shot amid a large fight that broke out after Cleveland's annual tree lighting event in Public Square. Huh. 
Um, so so we were walking across the street to the club at what, like 6.30-ish, 6.20, right? We went a little bit early that one, yeah, 6.15 or so. 6.15, yeah. 620, and there was like an insane fireworks show yeah. going off. Weirdly, like building window level. <laughs> it, was, it was It was a low <laughs> fireworks <laughs> show. It was seriously like, like a Disney finale. Like fourth floor level, like it was weird. It was very strange. I'm telling you, it never. None of it was like high up in the air. I was, was watching like, it through the reflection of like of car a, windows building, and shit. Yeah. yeah, it was very strange. So when we were walking by, it was like guns. It sounded like a fucking you know war yeah, yeah. zone. And then so that was two or three hours later. Then, huh? Because at the end of it, yeah, it says eight forty-five. Fuck, what happened? Man. Because we were sitting, we were watching just like a sea of people walk down that one main drag. That like tons yeah. and tons of people. It's wild. Um, keep going down. Let's see. Who's in custody? Go back up. Does it say who's two kids? Two juveniles. Two juveniles. Oh, the two victims were taken. Uh, man, two kid, juveniles shooting each other at a fucking over a fight. Tree tree lighting. Lighting, yeah. Yeah. Fight broke out over uh, who got yeah. a candy cane. It's a mess of it, a situation. It really is stink town USA. But damn it, that club is out of this world. Good. The food's incredible. The it's crowds were unbelievable. Right? Dude, Nick that owns it, holy Maybe. shit, this guy's the best. Yeah, sweet. The He's whole like thing. 81 Sam, years old. Uh, Scott. Sam, all of them. The whole team over there. We good, went to the club. Rock and Roll Great Hall. Great fucking club. We went to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame with your pop. Yeah. That was fun. <laughs> we did. I was crushing White Claws. <laughs> yeah, we got a little Walking boozy around. at the... Mikey went to go shred in the garage. Yeah, they had a lefty. So at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame now, they have a the garage. It's basically like a studio where you can pick up instruments and play mm -hmm. and like just jam out and stuff. And so they had a lefty guitar. I'm lefty, so Fucking I picked it up. So Shred Zeppelin over here. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm playing with the knobs, trying to be cool. And this guy oh, walks yeah, this over. This is really funny. So what it is, the setup of it is, <laughs> to give you a, a full picture here, it's every guitar. There's like seven, eight guitar stations, if not more, and they have lefty and righty at each. And um, and there's a huge in each station. There's this big, huge amp behind you, like Marshall stacks, like a big stack. With a thing on top of it with the knobs. And Mike was over there, uh, dealing with the knobs, like trying to change the tuning and the whatever. Yeah, like fucking David Gilmore in Pompeii. I'm like playing with shit. Fuck yeah. it. And I think they go, I think the sound just comes out of the thing above your head. Right, there's a little speaker above his head, and Mike's like, "Oh yeah." And then, then, then one of the workers almost be like, "He came over." What are you an like, asshole? <laughs> there's a there's a there's a screen that says like distortion, you know, clean, whatever. <laughs> like they make it easy. I'm over here like fiddling, which it's not changing anything. Yeah, you, there's a button. Yeah, it's, just, it's just all computer. <laughs> I'm like, sh 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 hold on, I almost got it. I almost got it. Ring. I'm trying to turn up the tanning and rip the knob off. <laughs> They're like, you dork. Damn. Yeah, Mike fucking blew his fucking thing off. I'm afraid you're just too darn loud. <laughs> it was so fun. Your old man knew a lot about hip hop. I was very uh, blown away by that. Like him and I were geeking out over like Flava Flav's clock size. Yeah. And he's like, man, I thought it would be bigger. And I'm he like, was not. Well, first of all, it's such a dumb thing for him to say. <laughs> I thought it'd be bigger. It was one of his clocks. It was that one that was the smaller one. <laughs> it was like an outfit, particularly that right, he gave right. in for one video. So his clocks, he wore gigantic ones and small ones. It wasn't just a clock. So he doesn't know that much about hip hop. But my dad, yeah, he just got the peripheral information of like the, and especially yeah. the stuff that would be at the 90 years of, uh, or the 50, 50 years, years of hip hop. Like there's such things like my dad knows who Snoop Dogg is and all that stuff. Sure. They came out, not through me. I wasn't around them enough to influence what do you hear? Just the ether of, like, public knowledge, you know what he I mean? He just knew it. Well, you never, like, geeked out about it with him. No, 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 no. And I'm saying he was never like, no, no. When he walked through that, you know, it's like... It was also the beginning of the trip, so I think he wasn't tired yet. Yeah, he had to take a... He went to sit down a few times. He sat down next to me when I was playing guitar, and I sat on the arm and played him night moves. <laughs> 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 Working with your mom boobs. <laughs> Bing, gang, gong, gong. Gong, gang, gong, gang. Wonder so could have used a few pounds. That place is uh, terribly anticlimactic, though. It just it's 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 you go cool, up to the top but now. But I, I used to think it was a special exhibit, but you go up to a couple things from Pink Floyd's The Wall upstairs, which is a pl place where you can sit down and have a drink. Literally, now you just drink under the wall. It it's not the wall. No, it's not pieces from the stage set or anything. It's just a display. With they, I think the. The original uh, teacher, the original teacher blow up thing, like the blow up uh, from the blimp wall thing, is over it. I think that's uh, real. Not... 
I don't know Pink Floyd that well. Um, but it's just, in the end, then you just go back down. It's, it's very underwhelming. Yeah, it's very boring. It's a lot of escalators. It's just m- more escalators than anything. Oh, we should look for that lady who, because I always skip through like the early, you know, like the the Wind Dixies and all those kind of like bands and stuff with banjos and the, oh, old the early dress and stuff, stuff. like yeah. Lead Belly and like yeah, all but that no, shit. not even no, not even that like. Just like, when, like, like, like I said, when it goes like the Sam Cooke and all that stuff, I'm like, eh, Sun right. Records and all that, yeah. like Elvis and... Uh, but I was, we should have seen they had that girl, uh, what's called, they were playing her on a, a Stern Thology again the other day. What's the, the the lady who did like the dirty, she did like dirty old jazz. Like, if you suck on my pussy, I'll suck up on your oh, dick. Yeah. No, <laughs> yeah, really? The best, yeah. Brogdon? What's her name? Something Brogdon. Black lady, right? Lucille yeah. Bogan. Okay. Okay, dude. I'm just trying to get yeah, it. It is Lucille Bogan, yes. but okay. Lou, just trying yeah. to paint a picture. Whoa. If you <clears throat> suck up on my puss, baby, <sighs> won't you shit uh, on my tits? Uh, baby, won't you give me a Pearl uh, Jam necklace? Lucille Bogan. <clears throat> Till the cows come home. That's her jam. Oh, wait. Yeah, Shave Them Dry is also a good one. Shave Them Dry. I think wasn't like jazz and shit. Like, they used to just play songs while... Like, you got the length of a song, like, with a chick at a, like, burlesque house. or Like, if you went to a house and banged a chick, you got to till the song ended. And I think that's where it kind of, like, <laughs> was improv. Was fucking piano-y song. Yeah. Like, <laughs> do, 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 and I think that's kind of where it started. So maybe this was, like, her, that's so fucking cool. I got nipples on my titties, <laughs> bush on my clit. She's sitting there going, hang on, what do you think of this line? <laughs> I let a man fuck me till I take a shit. I got the funky <laughs> dry blues. <laughs> I really like that shit on a man. Slapping on my pussy. Oh, man. I love it. Damn, man. I like her. I never if heard of her. suck up on my pussy. I suck. It, came, it got, like, big for a minute. So you basically made up a line in your head that you thought was in the song? No, no I didn't. She... <laughs> God Shave damn. Dry too? Huh? Shave him dry too? Come on, Doubt really? it. I don't know. It's the same song. I wonder what shave him dry. What does that mean? Shave him dry. Oh, dry man. shave? Dude, you're such a you're such a prude. Dry shave? <laughs> huh? Dude, you're such a prude. You don't know what shave him dry means. No shaving no, man. cream? Nah, <laughs> dude. You know what it means. Is it like you know? Shh. You know, think about it. I have no idea. Shave them dry. I know that's what I mean. Like, what what was going on back then? Slap my pancake titty out. Give your butt a sniff. <laughs> good, 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 good. Is John Mayer still in the building? I got some lyrics. Yeah. If you give me, suck John, up give on me a, my pussy, John, out. give me a B minor. Suck up on your dick. Take it for a walk with me. Yeah. Bring, Bring it around the block. Pretty great. All the sides. Yeah, I sent a picture. Mashed taties. Yeah. Stuffing. Green bean casserole. It was, yeah, it was great. So your brother didn't have to go get a turkey from the bar? <laughs> no. You didn't have to go wrestle a fucking I thought about that so many turkey. times this weekend. I was like, I wonder if right now a bar going, turkey. Give me it. Give me it. Mine. Give it. Can we share it? <laughs> Just doing wishbones with a fucking alcoholic. <laughs> oh, Jacob, I saw a thing I want to try with you. I think it's be a fun prank. I saw a video this morning of a black dude who goes to... Did you see this, Lou? Who goes to Detroit with a see-through backpack that's got $35,000 it's fake money mm-hmm. in it and he just goes up and it tells people he's from out of town has he have some fun in Detroit and 100% of them try to viciously rob him oh my god <laughs> he has to eventually go like it's a joke it's a prank it's a prank it's a prank holy uh, shit one guy says it's a prank he goes come on man I got kids you can't play with me like that and then they shake hands afterwards uh-huh. it's fucking crazy it's on Worldstar. Of course it's on Worldstar, Christine. It's my only news source. No, it's on CNN.com. Yeah, on That's where I go after uh, lobster tube and the nip slip. <laughs> if you suck up on my titties, I'll suck up on your dick. If I wrote those lyrics, Mike, let's build from that on a song. Let's do it. Now that I know it's fucking shredded clock in your mind all the time. <laughs> I'll sniff up on your hiney. You lick up on my toes. <laughs> Sucking on my butthole and I'll suck up on your dick. Gotta shave them dry. Shave them dry. I wonder what that means. I want to know what shave them dry meant. I also wonder why stick in the mud was ever a thing. Like, what kind of time was there when it was like a bad thing if you had mud on your stick? You ever think about that? Like, why, does, why, did, why would stick in the mud? We just take it as it is, right? I always, again, 
Maybe I was fucked up the way I was raised, but I always said stick in the mud was like fucking getting fucked in your butthole. <laughs> it's not even close to it. What? This guy's a real butt fuck. Uh, this guy's a real dick in the asshole. Yeah, left a bunch of Pearl Jam in my mud. <laughs> you ever think about that? Why was stick in the mud like a big deal? Like, ah, oh, he's a real stick in the mud. Uh, what, what's wrong with having mud on your stick? Was, was there a shortage of sticks? Now they're all mud. Did you find something? I never thought of it. No, just researching. Oh. About what? Lucille Bogan. Rub shave and dry. I just want to see what she's about. Yeah, we got her. <laughs> she's turning me on. We got our Christmas tree, and it's the dumbest Christmas tree. It, Why? It's, it looks pregnant on from one angle. The tree looks pregnant from the other angle. It looks uh, thin, like it fell off a truck on the way. Really? Yeah, it's bad. It looked good outside, but it did not make it. I don't know. The neighbors are seeing a very shitty angle for sure. <laughs> yeah, it's bad. And now they're all gonna know, dude. We got into a beef about lighting the tree from the bottom to the top or the top to the bottom and plugged in or not plugged in you and your wife yeah a beef you know not a beef we, we're fine but you know you worked it out <laughs> corporal punishment she eventually understood i'm just wondering uh dude you know. please do me a favor this weekend yeah you're home uh yeah this weekend yeah i have shows new york shows please but... watch mother love god the whole thing did you watch the third sure. part yeah dude this it's a pretty insane story I'll give you a little touch. I'm going to wait for Bobby to come back and watch it before we really break it down. But it's batshit crazy. It's about a chick who was like a cute chick in the 90s and then decided uh, one day to leave everybody in her family and just go be a cult leader. And she did it very successfully, at least for what they needed. They just had it. It's a batshit cult story, like nothing too new or nutty there, except for she decided at one point, like, you know what colloidal silver is? No. They say it's got. Look at what it is, actually, Christine. Where, like, where can I? Where is she? America? Oh yeah. I don't know if this was Canada. No, this is very American. Okay. Colorado, Colorado, Colorado Oregon, Oregon, Hawaii. <laughs> All those places. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. She started in Colorado she though. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of weirdos there. Oh yeah, and a lot of people who are looking for a weirdo to follow. Hell yeah. Because you know what's funny? These for the first time I've ever seen in a cult show, the cultists seem so normal. As except for the fact that they are die hard by this cult, does that make sense? Like several, there's definitely dippy people in that cult for sure. You watched it, Lou, right? I assume. Yeah, yeah. There's definitely dip, dippy people in the cult, but there's also people in there like. They're like, all right, so mother is going to ascend today. She believes. Dude, there's so much good in this, Mikey. Well, she believes I can't her wait angels. To watch it. Her angels, who she has direct contact with. Uh huh. Christine, you got to bring up the the picture. <laughs> she has a board. Of all, like a poster board that she's made that's there, basically, you know, that's their Christ on the cross. The Galactics. This board. The, Galactics the Galactics is, Galactics, their, is her angels? It's her angels, but the Galactics, when you see who they are, it's an interesting group. Uh, the 86 New York Mets? Oh, I wish. Uh, maybe. Those are my Galactics. Maybe one of them, maybe one of them, because I'll tell you who is the main, the honcho. Uh, there's two head honchos on either side of her, one on either side of her. One's a drawing of some guy I've never heard of. The other one, Robin Williams. <laughs> Are you serious? Robin Williams is her good And her it's angel? not even the wackiest of what's on the board of the other angels. <laughs> Was it Fisher King Robin Williams? But they'll come and they'll be like, uh, no, it's Mork for Mork, Robin Williams. But they, uh, they literally, she'll say things like, Robin told me you're gaining weight. <laughs> like Robin Come says, on. You're she got a message from Whoa, Robin. that's her board of look of angels. Robin Williams, a drawing of some guy, the crocodile hunter, Michael Jackson, Whitney David Houston, Bowie. David Bowie, Gene Wilder, Bob, John Denver, Chris Farley, Chris Farley, Tupac, George, George Burns. Michael, George, George Burns, um, Lily, look, Mr. Rogers, Carol Burnett, Carol Burnett. Is that Bob Marley down there in the very bottom? Uh, yep. Yes, Bob Marley is also in there. Jim Croce. Uh, Jim Croce, Christopher Reeve, Christopher Reeve. Dude, is that it's is that Frank Walt, Zappa, Walter Becker? Uh, maybe right below, next to George Michael, south of David Bowie. Maybe Tupac. I mean, is that Larry David under her ring finger? Uh, let me see. It possibly could be Larry David. I think I don't understand. Donna this. Summers. Thomas, Where underneath her pinky? Um, who is that? Oh no, it's Carol Burnett. Wait, I thought. Carbonate under her pink. That's her. Jonathan Winters. Right. Jonathan, Jonathan Winters. Winter. And then, and then, oh, look at. Uh, she loves comedy. Uh, what's it called? Um, <laughs> Crocodile Hunter. Gene Wilder. Oh, there's a picture of all. We can see all. Oh, Regis made the cut. Jerry Lewis. Swazay. Trump. Salvador Dali. Trump. John Ritter. 
Is Trump the only alive one? Kenny Rogers. No, Tom Cruise is alive. There's really no rhyme or reason. That's why it's throwing Cruise. me off. A oh, lot yeah, of these George. people are Where's alive. Tom That's Cruise? what I mean. I'm like, uh, yeah. Tom Cruise? Uh, where's Tom Cruise? Right here. That's not Tom Cruise. No, that's that's Reese. <laughs> By the way, uh, Swayze. Christine, they do look... Walt Disney. Swayze, Prince, John Candy, Aretha Franklin, Jerry Lewis. Regis Philbin. Regis Philbin. Hey, Richard Pryor already. That's uh, Jim Henson. Jim Henson. And Kermit. He's, she's, got your, she's got your boy Kermy in there. I did not notice Jay? that Kermit made the cut. Yo, John, <laughs> this is like this is like a, 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 a the poor man Sergeant Peppers. <laughs> <laughs> and then another drawing Julia of somebody. Child. Julia Child also. Yeah, everyone's dead. Hey, who's that with the pipe? Is that a young Rodney Dangerfield next to Trump? Yes. Ugh. It's Rodney Dangerfield Creepy also. Creepy looking. Yeah. Buddy, the whole thing is so bad shit, Prince, but she gets people Spa, to follow right. her. And by the way, apparently they still do streams. But they, what they do is the whole documentary essentially is what, and you know this from the beginning because they show it, and you can't believe, you have to see what slowly happens to her to believe what you see in the very first minute of the documentary. They show you come, them coming in to finding her dead body oh. uh, on a bed. But she takes this colloidal silver as a thing. She starves herself. She's a, she's a lunatic. She just literally needs medication. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but they all follow her saying she's god and they do drugs and then she's mean and she snaps and she's anorexic and she's all this shit and she starts taking this colloidal silver now what's funny is the people in her cult that do this podcast this live stream when they're talking they go oh fda uh, banned colloidal silver because they don't want you to know all those things they say it turns you blue and whatever it's, it turns your skin blue and like shut up okay like <laughs> and like they're they're talking about it like they're almost reasonable. Yeah, yeah. And then the last episode and uh, and like a half, by the end of the show, she's blue. Like she's as blue as Jacob's shirt. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. I can't believe this happens. Really? It looks like David Lynch characters. <laughs> I Just swear like to God. Assault. I, yeah, buddy. <laughs> when he's got a blueberry for a daughter. That's... They hold on to her dead body for way too long. And then they hang out with her body just Wait, like the... jam it. Dude, the guy who you will love when you watch this. Yeah. She's called Mother. Is the guy... Father. Father. That's her? Did, yeah. Oh, she's kind of cute. She was kind of cute at well, a time. She became a blueberry, yeah. I got a blueberry for a daughter. That's what she looked like? Look at her. That's oh, fucking fuck. crazy. What a weirdo. Yeah. And she just basically, she just starved herself and took a poison to kill herself dramatically so everyone would Whoa, like, you know, worship her is that what she ended still. up looking like? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yikes, dude. It's, it's worse. How did, did she have a lot of followers? No. But like she enough. made a lot of money, she so that's what she money. did. That's is that basically like to constitute a cult? You're kind of like yeah, pay me to continue being your leader. Yes, yeah. give me all, give all your money to the cause here. But there's father, Whoa. the guy whose father likes to go out and just do. Remember when the guy in Roadhouse came down to Saul Patrick Swayze doing a uh, Tai Chi by the thing? Yeah, he just breaks into that no matter where he's at. He'll start doing. Dude, he is such a jerk off. <laughs> <laughs> a real Colorado, father. a real Colorado bimbo. Give a little taste to him, Christine. There's a conversation with. Uh, fa By the way, what's so great? Yeah, and I'll tell you this too in a second. Whoever she's fucking and decides she wants to be like boyfriend with. Yeah. She says they are. I hey, I just got word. By the way, from the Galactic. Brotherhood of all of them. Like when she goes, okay, like your father God. Then she started fucking this dude with a ponytail who's the, the wackiest dude, she goes, wait, he's Father God. And then the young guy's like, I thought I was Father God. She goes, no, 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 you're Father of the Multiverse. <laughs> and he, he wears sense. that proud. He goes, Father of the Multiverse. She's like, you're Father of the Mountain Time Zone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's ridiculous. <laughs> wow, I can't I know. see this. We got to take a break, everybody. We're hanging out with Mike Fenoya, Robert Kelly coming home tomorrow. But Mike Fenoya special, Don't Let Me Down, is available right now at youtube.com slash at Mike Fenoya. Uh, on New Year's Eve, Mike's going to be headlining Comics Mohegan Sun. For tickets and all of his tour dates, go to MikeFenoya.com and follow at Mike Fenoya on all socials. Uh, Bobby Kelly's going to be in Dania Beach. That's December 14th through the 16th, I believe. I'm not looking right at it. Um, but I do believe that is what it is. And uh, I am going to be in Houston, Providence, Pittsburgh. Uh, Pittsburgh's New Year's Eve weekend. For tickets and tour dates, go to BigJComedy.com. I didn't say RobertKellyLive.com for all his dates. So much stuff coming up. I was, there we go. Bobby's going to be in Donya Beach December 15th and 16th. After that, he's going to be in Fort Wayne, Indiana for New Year's Eve. Two shows, one night. Saratoga Springs in Wisconsin. 
For tickets and tour dates, go to robertkellylive.com. And the Bonfire Live holiday show happening Tuesday, December 12th. It's sold the fuck out. Nice. We're already sold out, right? Word up. Woo. Take it off the board, Christine. Just a reminder that it's happening. Check the box. Check the box. We'll be right back. It's the Bonfire. Diamond studs you lifetime trade-in. That means you can trade up your diamond studs at any time. Your real, natural, earthborn diamonds are always worth what you paid at Steven Singer Jewelers, and Steven also has the best guarantee in the business. With a full 100-day, 100% no-hassle money-back guarantee, don't wait to get the number one gift. Go right now to IHateStevenSinger.com and click on his Anita Diamond Stud Earrings. Order with fast and free shipping, or visit Steven Singer Jewelers showroom at the other corner of 8th and Walnut in Philly. Buy real diamonds from a real jeweler you can trust. Steven Singer Jewelers. That's I hate Steven Singer.com. Womp lives alone in a something blob. Anything in there. Slop, slop, might be dead. Our frames, everybody. They're in the house. Listen. It's the holidays. You're looking for a gift to give. This is a goodie. Each year, there's new memories created and moments that are really special, and we capture them on our cameras, and now we can share them with family who can't be with us thanks to our digital picture frames. It's the perfect gift for the people you love. It's not a digital picture frame you remember from years ago. There's no USB. There's no SD cards. There's no hassle. Aura is easy to use and even easier to set up. There's an app that walks you through with just a few steps and boom, ready to go. Now grandma can see how well our famous recipes turned out. Give the perfect gift this holiday visit, this holiday season. Visit Aura Frames today and get $30 off their best-selling frames with code BONFIRE. These frames sell out quickly, though, so make sure you get yours before they are gone. It is a fantastic gift for the family. That's AuraFrames.com. Promo code BONFIRE. Terms and conditions do apply. The Bennington Show. Now on weekdays at noon. Have you seen these things where people are realizing that their hip hop sounds like elderly music now? When I heard that the young people thought Eminem sounded like circus music. Look at this edgy dude. We thought it was cool. Hi, my name is. That does sound like a clown. The Bennington Show. Now on weekdays at noon Eastern and always available on demand. Oh, oh, oh I love the holidays. Throwing the perfect holiday party doesn't require an entire workshop. Here's my little secret. WineEnthusiast.com Wine Enthusiast puts the holiday cheer in my seasonal soirees. From keeping my favorite bottles stored at the perfect temperatures. Honey, can you get me another red from the wine cooler? Yes, Mrs. Claus. From stemware to decanters, WineEnthusiast.com is the premier destination for wine accessories, storage, cheese boards, and personalized gifts galore. For wine and whiskey lovers and aficionados. Cheers! WineEnthusiast.com is your one stop holiday gift giving destination shop the wine enthusiast.com black friday cyber monday and holiday deals for the best prices of the year on wine storage gifts and more plus get free standard shipping on orders of 99 dollars or more text cheers to 511 511 to get 15 percent off your first order text cheers to 511 511 wine enthusiast.com we bring wine to life discount and shipping exclusions apply message and data rates may apply text stop to opt out i was afraid to cut the cord but once i did i couldn't believe it took so long to do it Paying too much for my cable bill had become a bad habit. I either wasn't getting what I wanted. For me. Uh, living out in Vegas now, correct? Yes, living in Vegas. Very, very cool, everybody. He is a legendary voice performer uh, from the Howard Stern Show. Hilarious comedian, actor, an old time friend of mine. Long old time. Long friend. I've known this guy for 20 years at least. At least. 20, 20 25 years, yes. I, I'm 25 years in comedy. Next year, I met you about two years in. So, probably about 22 years. It is the hilarious Craig Gash joining us, everybody. It's so crazy to look back on uh, on memories from back then and how broke we were. I was starting to make some money. Uh, you had some pop going on the road a little bit because of the Stern was, was going Stern. big. Yeah, got me on a couple TV shows, and I was starting to make money. Uh, but I remember uh, we were all still relatively broke. Then. Oh yeah, and I I remember a couple of times that I thought 
I don't know why Jay's doing that. He could just say, what's up? Like, when we would come from uh, Queens or, or wherever you guys were living at, and you'd be like, oh, man, I don't think I'm going to do the LIE this time. I'm going to see if I can get around this way. And you'd just go on the on the free bridge. On yeah, the you know, 59 Street Bridge, yeah. And I'd go, yeah. Like, you know, and you go, yeah, I think I'm just going to try this. And I'd be like, yeah, whatever. You know, <laughs> it's free, dude. Like, do it. Whatever. And I, I just, I remember you would, like, vocalize it. Oh, you, yeah. You no, vocalized I hate being it. Broke. Like, Boy, did I hate being broke. Uh, once or twice. Yeah. It's yeah, so man. scary. Well, you even told me that, too. You're like, get off. Why go exit 17 when you can go 18 and take the... Uh, you know, Harlem River Drive. Up, oh, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Like to go back to Connecticut and shit. Yeah, and dude, when, when yeah. you know how to get stuff for free, it's, it's kind of hard to go back. Start and, paying for and it. Start paying, yeah. When you know how to <laughs> save money on the road, do you do that? Do you ever, like, in moments, like, like you know you can get something for free and you, you'll you'll take something for free rather than pay no, for it? No, not anymore. I always think, I've gotten a lot of things for free that sucked. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, mm -hmm. it's, I usually Such do as, feel, like, I do feel do just, just, like, uh, tattoo. Not none of my tattoos... The guy who does my tattoos, Manny, who I don't want anyone to get it twisted. He's the skank, he's the uh, skank fest tattoo artist uh, now, main guy. He does my tattoo. He's awesome artist. Mm. But there was a time in my life where I was like, I'll take any free tattoo, and because I got some shitty tattoos. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone's what type like, of free shit? What type of free shit on the road would you get? Um, you talking like food? You talking hotels? You talking anything? Yeah, Craig was good at like finagle. He was a good finagle. He was very good, very uh, outgoing personality. So Craig was good to like. Use like the radio and whatever to kind of like get a nice thing. Like they want us to come to this restaurant and stuff like that. I've, I've gotten like. You know where I learned that was when I was a kid and I would hang out with famous rock bands. Mm -hmm. I was shocked at how many rock bands would be like, "Yeah, let's go to the movies, but we'll just tell them we're coming." Yeah, yeah, yeah. and then say, "Hey, you want some tickets to our concert?" And we'll, yeah, man, we'll get everybody in the movie theater. They'll be like, "No way!" So yeah, and then yeah. Tesla shows up. At the movie theater, and then they get a whole bunch of, uh, uh, you know, get popcorn and snacks for everybody. And they got room in the back of the arena <laughs> for 10 people. Like, yeah, come yeah. on in. And they would trade out everything. And I was like, this is mind-blowing. Like, you just, you're saving so much money on the road. <laughs> and then also getting extra bodies in the room yeah. who are then going to buy merch and, and whatever. So, yeah, I mean, you you learn that that you can actually that it's worth something to be able to get people into right. the show so yeah. craig craig brought to the boston comedy club and that still existed uh down in the uh, uh, west village it was man was some couple of cool ones they were just like like craig's like at that point like your level of like who you knew in music was just so my we it was right in my wheelhouse of mm -hmm. The first bands that I was like, I like this band. This mm -hmm. has nothing to do with my parents or hearing it mm -hmm. from somebody else. And it was like, one time Craig walked in and he goes, yeah, he goes, uh, you know, the boss, he's like, I'm going to try to go on uh, next if I can because my friend uh, Jeff's got to get out of here. And you look up and you're like, is that Jeff Labar from Cinderella? And he's like, <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, that's fucking crazy, dude. Yeah. That's Bad shit, crazy. Just in fact, out at Boston. the only time I will say Craig uh, is one of the few people you caught in the sweet spot when Howard Stern was first dating Beth. Yeah, and got them. They, I was, I came as they were leaving, but I Howard did see them Beth. leave. Howard and Beth uh, wow. were walking out of the Boston Comedy Club, and I was like, "Well, fucking way!" Wow, that was, crazy. that was that was the first day I ever sat in with Howard sitting next to him. And he's like, where are you at tonight? And I was like, oh, I'm at this club. And he's like, I'm going to come down. And he showed up. And I remember uh, as he was walking out, Rich Voss had just got on stage. And Rich was trying to roast him as he walked out. And he's like, yeah, cool. Like, <laughs> and he walked out, you know. But yeah, I remember bringing in, um, there was actually a friend that I made. Like, one guy made a comment to me that I valued so much that whenever I'm in a creative spot where I need uh, honest opinions mm -hmm. i call him it was Ozfest was in town with a day off and a bunch of the bands came to watch me at boston comedy club and when you walked into the club there was a table that was like you know with one band table with another band table with another band and for whatever reason i fucking ate it that night I just, <laughs> oh. and the reason why is because well I they're think, not always great audiences also yeah <laughs> uh, i've want, been in that situation I, I think i tried to do something in the beginning that i thought like oh well these tables are gonna love this <laughs> and it fucking bombed. not like tawny katane's crackhead ass <laughs> yeah. and like whoa Easy. we all like her 
And oh, I, I thought you guys hated her. Oh, oh shit. Keep that on the bus, dude. Yeah. <laughs> well, I started, I started with a giant misstep, and then my next thing was a misstep, then my next thing was a misstep, and then I... Ozzy's gay. Yeah. Boo. <laughs> <laughs> and then I just went into the material that I knew would work, and at that point, I felt like I'd lost them so much, it was just, it was heavy lifting for the rest of the set. I get off stage, I walk by the seven dust table, and I know I just bombed. I know it. And I walked up to the seven dust table, and I was like, hey, guys, sorry about that. And they're like, no, you were awesome. And I was like, nah. nah. And I go to the disturbed table, and I go, hey, guys, sorry about that. And they're like, dude, that was fucking, no, you were killer. And I go, yeah. And then I he go, goes, do you mean it? And he went, ooh, wah. Ah. <laughs> hey, look me in the eyes. <laughs> ooh, wah. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> Do then I mean I, it? I swear on my uh, uh, uh. Then I, then, then I, then I go to a uh, a table that has the guys from System of a Down, and I go, I go, hey guys, sorry about that. And the drummer stood up, and he goes, he goes, hey man, let's go outside. And I go, what? He goes, come here, follow me. We walk outside. He turns around. He goes, you want to know why you sucked? I'll tell you exactly why you sucked tonight. First of all, what's with the fucking new jokes? What what's this shit? And he goes, and everyone here loves your impressions. What the fuck? You didn't do any impression? I go, yeah, you're right. And he, <laughs> he fucking dressed me down, and he happened to hit everything I knew was wrong with my set. So now if I do, like, a roast, and I'm I'm trying to figure out if this material's going to work or not. You go, wake up. Wake yeah. up. Make yeah. sure you do all your good stuff. Good stuff. <laughs> Don't try your other new shit. New shit. Always try to stick around and do the A stuff. A stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Even if you want to. Even if the Serbs in the audience, you want to. Even if the Serbs in the audience, don't forget that. I don't think I trust <laughs> my <laughs> new stick with the old. unfinished joke ideas. <laughs> I. <laughs> <laughs> Save the new stuff for the open mics. Save the new stuff for the open mics. <laughs> Cheer up. Just do your fucking shit. There's going to be another set tomorrow. <laughs> Just do the motherfucking impressions. Oh, dude, I told dude. you. They have uh, Vinnie Paul and his uh, some people came out to see me right after I did Mayhem Fest one year in Kansas City. And I was like, so I was. I mean, I, I don't remember having a bad sip or whatever it was when I got off. They were like, oh, he left like a long time ago. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh, no no shit. Yeah. Oh. Like, oh, yeah, he left like a while ago. Oh, that's It means so much to us as comics. <laughs> oh, yeah, for it, sure. It, it does. Stay, for, no, to no. us as comics, like, uh, Jay is a rare guy who's also performed with huge bands that I, I think, for me personally, there's some dumb thing where I want to be one of the guys, and that's mm -hmm. why I want to do those shows. I want to be one of the guys, even though those gigs are the absolute worst <laughs> gigs yeah. you could possibly yeah. do as a stand-up comedian. And Jay is the only guy I know who has the balls to actually go out there and say, I'm a stand-up comic, here's my jokes. Uh, I, ha I fucking lie to the audience. <laughs> I I'll, I've, I've opened for Metallica and System. And I do stuff with Corey I watched Taylor. him for Metallica here at the Bowery. At the Bowery Ballroom, and I walked out on stage and said, good evening, my name is Craig. I am Metallica's tour manager. Everyone was like, what? And I go, the band has some very important announcements. Yeah. And every announcement was super cool, but total bullshit, just so I could get them <laughs> to listen. And I was like, you may have heard some rumors, and it's true. Metallica is recording our first ever live album right here. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So I need your attention. I need your attention. There's a proper way to yell on a live album, so we need to rehearse this. And they follow every stupid instruction I give them, fill in some jokes. And um, I know Jim Florentine once told me that when he opens up for bands, he'll always uh, do a few minutes. And then if it's not if it's not going well, he'll go like, "Hey, who wants some T-shirts?" And, he, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. and he's always and he has Jaeger girls like on the side of the stage. I have Jaeger girls though too. You know? I said, "Well, the Jaeger girls were fun because you could bring there's like ten of them, so I'd bring them up on stage and I would just like." Like roast them on, you know what I mean? Yeah, so I was like, because yeah. it's a it's a goofy, ugly rock audience. You know what I mean? Right. It's like smoking hot girls who couldn't give two fucks about the music. They're there for a gig, a modeling right. gig. True. She's getting up there and just start telling these guys why they don't want to fuck them. Yeah. <laughs> this one's gonna talk to you about her dancing dreams all night. You don't want to deal with that shit. This one's gonna keep um, looking in the mirror at herself. You, know, me, and Craig. One of my favorite.
just early comedy, like night stories. Again, where it's like a great idea going bunk. Like Craig does a killer impression. Actually, let me ask you this first. Are you in town? To go to the last Kiss show ever? Not only am I going to the last okay, two we're Kiss going. shows. You're going to both? I'm going to both. And then I'm also, the reason why I came into the studio was to tell you that the night before mm-hmm. and the night after the final shows from Kiss, I am doing a couple of shows at the comic strip where I'm just making fun of Kiss for an hour. The whole show, beginning to end, is just jokes and stories about Kiss. With love, because I've developed a relationship with the guys. Are I, they coming? I, um... I know people that work with them are coming. Uh, I did this two other times: Austin, Texas, He's trying to and stay healthy too. Seattle, um, and you know what to do now. And their and their crew has has come out. Their production people have come out. Some of their management. I know a lot of other musicians are coming out. Nice. You know, and they have their own stories too. I'm not allowed the comic strip. <laughs> You're not <laughs> still. It's fine. Really? It's okay. Wow. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's all stories about Kiss because you know that's starting awesome. down the hall with Howard, um, I would do an impression. Of yeah, I do impressions, but the impression I did at Gene Simmons was behind this premise of every time we'd have a music guest in the studio, I would constantly interrupt the music guest as Gene Simmons and try to sell them shitty Kiss products. Yeah, <laughs> and, it was uh, great. And yeah. it was silly. And well, it was funny. great. But can I say that's, that leads into one of my uh, oh yeah yeah, yeah. favorite so, nights? But I'm going. Uh, me, Christine, uh, Bobby. My daughter and uh, Bobby's son are going to go Saturday. Saturday? To okay, the final cool. show ever, yeah. I'm right, excited, cool. man. It's good. We and Christine saw him for the first time not long ago. They have something planned at the very, very end of the show. Yeah. That uh, is going to be really unique. And I'll be honest, I don't even know exactly what it is. I just know they spent a lot of time working on this thing they're going to end the show with. So, yeah. Uh, but mass what? suicide. Yeah. They're going to they're going to shoot the star child out of a cannon, and they're, they're all going to pull out Tommy guns and just take out the fucking pit. But you were saying one of your earliest memories was so it was me and, uh, of comedy was me and Craig, and Craig included me in this because Craig also knew from the time we met how much I loved. I met Craig just like in comedy. Mm-hmm. And like you were starting to do the voices a little bit on on Stern mm-hmm. and stuff, so it was like kind of like a fresh thing. And Craig was loved. I met Craig just like in comedy, mm-hmm. and like you were starting to do the voices a little bit on on Stern mm-hmm. and stuff, so it was like kind of like a fresh thing. And Craig was still like, but he was just getting in with that. It was going over. You were on pretty regularly at this point, mm-hmm. like calling him with voices, and they they pitched an idea to the E Channel. Craig dresses up full Gene Simmons regalia, the whole demon makeup and the whole yeah. thing, and because he does a great impression, we go try to get into the oh MTV God, Awards. Oh, I forgot about that. Oh, no The shit. MTV Music Awards. Yeah. They go, yeah, we'll do it. And Craig goes, oh, and my buddy Jay is another comedian. He'll be like my like assistant, like a, yeah. you know, my point guy or whatever, yeah. my security. That's what it was, security. I was going to be your security guy. <laughs> I fucking had a fat shirt that said security from Big and Tall already. <laughs> oh, perfect. <laughs> so I just wore that. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> and we, pu- we, pu- just, we pulled right up to security at the Video Music buddy, Awards. We were shut down so, immediately. Yeah. We, so there was no footage there. We pulled up to the car and they go, we have Gene Simmons here. Let's get back. He goes, they were like, that ain't Gene Simmons. Gene Simmons ain't on the list to be here. And they were like... <laughs> Okay. Hey right, guys, you know what are we going to do? We gave it a shot. Like, it was so fast. But I remember a small detail. The yeah, security please. looked in and laughed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we were in a Toyota Corolla. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we were in a Toyota Corolla. Yeah. And I'm fully dressed as Gene Simmons with Gene Simmons' outfit in the back seat, squeezed in. <laughs> and, there's a, and there's a camera guy yeah, who's there's like, a camera who's, guy. Who's, you know, he just looks like a pothead, like, yeah. filming the whole thing. <laughs> I think Doug Goodstein may have been with us. Yeah. And we, uh, and then it was like, well, we got to do something with this. Uh, footage and what we just did next it was like it just wasn't really the, the, the bit was kind of dumb but they needed something Yeah. so we went to the now gone I found out this went away recently Nice Guy Eddie's was a bar on Houston and uh
this bar. And we just went in and sat at a table and just ordered like drinks, bar food and drinks, just and just sat there and ate. The, just he was in full makeup. We just didn't bother anybody. No yeah. one really, but but people were like, "Is that?" You? And then we're like, "Yeah, wow." He's over there. He goes, he got, goes out to eat once in a while in full demon gear. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Craig was seven and a half feet tall. It was like he was wearing the fucking. They got yeah, him a good outfit. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, was, they got him a good outfit. It was off Stern budget, so they they like, then, spared no expense. Huh? <laughs> and then they used makeup it. artist. Yeah, and then they used it again by just they had Gene Simmons coming in, and Craig was just sitting in the room in the full makeup, weren't you? And, he, and Gene Simmons didn't love it at the time. Yeah, because I walked in there because because we had we had already had the confrontation a month earlier where Gene. We didn't know. When I started doing the Gene Simmons thing and I was interrupting people as Gene Simmons and saying, hi, this is Gene Simmons from KISS. And I just want to tell you that right now at KISSonline.com, you've just reminded me we have a KISS toilet. <laughs> What's the difference between a regular toilet and a KISS toilet? Our toilet is a pay toilet. You sit down, you put in a quarter, and you do your business while you listen to Deuce. And it was just <laughs> stupid shit like that. And we didn't know at the time the real Gene Simmons, we found out later, started getting hate mail because of the shit I was saying to people on the Howard Stern show. So Gene Simmons showed up one day. He just showed up and Gary came in and said, hey, so we got a problem. Uh, so Gene Simmons from Kiss just walked in the building. He wants to beat the fuck out of Craig right now. And and he came in. We had a funny segment. And then he came back as a guest. And I, said, and I pitched the idea. Wouldn't it be funny if I showed up dressed as Gene Simmons? And I actually walked in and said, I'm the real Gene Simmons. And you are an imposter. And I can prove it because I got a bunch of cheap shit I want to sell you. And I had a bag full of shit that we had written KISS logos on. I remember a lunchbox. It was like a New Kids in the Block lunchbox. Spray for the kiss he took out his Sharpie and just wrote, KISS, that's 50 bucks now. Yeah. And then and then I, you start getting contacted by people that – have you ever made jokes about somebody – and the people affiliated with that organization or close to those people are like, hey, man, I actually work with them. And here's some more stories. Do you ever get? No, I told the uh, I told the world that the uh, Barry Stock, the guitar bass player from Three Days Grace, uh, wife's a fat pig. But I just try to get him to fight me whenever he sees me. Why? What happened between you and, and then his that? drummer? His drummer reached out. <laughs> really? His, yeah. dr his drummer reached out to give you stories or to, or to get <laughs> mad? No, at no, no. He was like. Uh, it was weird. He caught up first. This thing was a little bit like, "Yo, dude, you got a problem with this guy?" And I'm like, "Yeah." I was like, "Yeah." I go, I do re reflect on. I said on the show. I said because someone was like, "You shouldn't do the families." I'm like, "Yeah, I guess you're right, but fuck him, whatever." What happened with the guy from Three Days Grace? That's the thing. I told you that years ago on the cruise ship, and he threw like fucking wine on the Legion of Skanks when we were doing it. But of course, it only hit me, and there was like a whole thing on Ship Rocks. Yeah, holy it was shit, whole ordeal. Fuck wow, him. just be was it in the middle of an interview. No, it was... He's just walking by the table. He walked by, he told us to shut up, no one cares about our podcast, which was just a weird thing for a performer to do, and we yeah. were like, fuck you, dude, fuck off. And he gave a through wine at us. Wow. It only hit me. He was aiming for Lewis. It only hit me. That is a tale as old as time, my friend. Wow. That is a tale as old as time. So you got like someone who was in the Gene Simmons camp got in touch with you and said, "Here's more meat for yeah, the bones." Fucking. It oh, was Corey like... Feldman's camp also hates us and wants us to stop everything we do. Really? <laughs> yeah. Craig, I'd imagine there's a lot of people like that. What was the question? I gotta tell you, my my friends are gonna be so psyched because to this day, the product that he, my my friend and I still quote is when when you said that. You were at the Kiss Cancer Center. <laughs> <laughs> that, I think that's the one that actually upset Suzanne. Probe them not. Suzanne Summers was in the studio and she uh, was, you know, telling the story about how she was fighting cancer and she was getting ahead of it. That's and it. I, and I, at the very end of the thing, I said, Suzanne, <laughs> this is Gene Simmons. <laughs> from kiss <laughs> and i want to tell you i am so moved by your story it's such a story that's it's so inspirational that we would like to offer you a kiss lunch pail <laughs> for 49.95 if you go to kissonline.com we'll give you the five cent discount and suzanne apparently lived in the neighborhood where gene lived and she went to his house and knocked on his door and said you're an asshole why would you do that in the middle of my appearance and he said it wasn't me it's a guy it's not me <laughs> wow. but but the people who um started contacting me were people who worked with kiss hey i got a story for you um, did I ever tell you that the the love relationship advice that Gene gave to the guy who was watching him hook up with women every night? Mm -mm. Gene, according to this guy, was uh, hooked up. This is before he got married. 
he hooks up with Miss America, according to this guy that mm-hmm. worked with Kiss. It was the reigning Miss America of that year. Gene Simmons hooks up with her. The whole crew is like, holy shit. The next night, Gene hooks up with a whore, a girl that is such a dirty, like, such a trashy girl that even the guys in the road crew are like, Nice. Jesus, what the fuck? The next night, they have a day off in a town that's so small that the band and the road crew are staying in the same hotel. And this guy tells me from his point of view, he goes, I was in the lobby of the hotel. I was was at the bar having a drink when Gene Simmons started walking through the lobby. And he's dragging this enormous girl with him through the lobby. And they get in the elevator. He turns around, pushes the button to his floor. And that's when he sees me. He makes eye contact and goes... Folds his arms. Oh yeah! Bing! And, the doors <laughs> to the elevator. and he said the next day at sound check, he walked up to him and he goes, "Gene, hey buddy, did you uh, did you hook up with that girl last night?" And Gene Simmons goes, "Of course." <laughs> and he goes, "Gene, didn't you hook up with Miss America the other night?" And he goes, "Steve, listen to me, okay? I'm gonna give you some valuable advice. You can't have filet mignon every night. Sometimes." You gotta go to McDonald's. It's the worst <laughs> fucking love oh, advice Jesus I've ever heard. Sometimes, <laughs> yeah. It's so funny. You know, Craig used to Craig used to smart move too. Before he was selling tickets at all, uh, he'd go on the radio, local radio places. He go, if I can go on local radio, I can get people. And he would just go and say all these people were gonna be here, and he would just do the impression of them, and people oh, yeah. would like fucking <laughs> show like, up. At one point, didn't I think? Someone was it Gary or something that got pissed off? He's like, people are getting because people reaching out to Gary Delabate being like, Why do people think I'm going to be in St. Louis tonight at the fucking whatever comedy club? <laughs> I don't think Gary ever got mad. Uh, <laughs> not mad. I mean, mad on me and mad, like really furious, but it was like right. people were reaching out to him going, like, I thought you were going to be at the show tonight. I was like, Dude, what? It, it started out where I would come on as a celebrity promoting the show, and then I would be a couple of celebrities. And then I realized I could talk as like four or five six celebrities at the same time as long as you keep talking mm-hmm. so it would be tracy morgan tom arnold adam sandler <laughs> uh, christopher walken al pacino alec baldwin are all in the studio and the premise is ridiculous and they're all looking and still some people would be like and people would be like holy where's shit. alec baldwin dude people you said <laughs> people would come to the show. well they'd all say we're not performing but we're going to see craig yeah, yeah, gas yeah. at the chuckle hut that's and- hilarious that they're all at like 99 rock wpl <laughs> yeah. like they're, they're all, all at once they're, they're all, all in the station yep and the scooter and, and buzz in the morning and everyone has a reason for being there like tom arnold is like i'm just here for uh i going to a narcotics anonymous meeting in town uh so we're going to be doing a 12-step uh meeting after the comedy show at the chuckle hut and then tracy morgan would be like i'm gonna film a porno in the parking lot i'm gonna be filming you want to go see a comedy show go inside the club you want to be in a movie called men in back yeah come out to the white handy van in the parking lot speak by Tracy. did you watch tracy's dark side of comedy i did it episode it's just but there's i mean it's the story you know there's nothing that really uh like different about it at all. About Tracy's car great, yeah. But it goes, I mean, it leads up to that, obviously, and it goes past. But man, I haven't really stayed up with Tracy's like work beyond that. I'm just happy he's okay and working again at all. Yeah. But I mean, Tracy went from like the you wipe that doo doo off your curtains and you, you fuck a baby in the ass <laughs> yeah. right in front of her mama. Yeah. <laughs> I slap your daddy with my dick and get your mama pregnant with it. all that shit. Yeah. Now it shows him on Oprah and he's like, making people laugh is how I. Got myself may not be bullied anymore. When I, he's like crying and stuff now. You go, whoa, dude, what? Wow. He was always crying though. He was all dude. No, not but, like this, man. This I is, don't know. But dude. he's not doing the other stuff at all. I mean, they they, they really, you know, compile it in this. Uh, yeah. That episode of the thing, but they show us five thousand TV appearances where the news people are like, "Okay, we gotta go." He's like, right. "I'm about to pull my dick out on the weather." Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, Whoa, all right, Tracy! All right, astronaut Jones, <laughs> calm down. <laughs> See, I remember Tracy always being that guy that would get naked and get emotional. And uh, I remember when I first I was living in LA when I first got out there. I didn't know anybody yet, and someone said, "Dude, dude there's a." It was supposed to be a comedian's birthday party at this bar. Bar. I go to the bar, and the only other comedian there was Tracy Morgan. And Tracy 
can go either way. Like I <laughs> Yo, was is this Hugh Fink's barbecue? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hugh Fink. <laughs> and so I I end up on a patio at this place just hanging out with some friends and somebody ran out and said, dude, Tracy Morgan's taking his clothes off doing karaoke. And I walk back inside and Tracy Morgan is on a microphone and he's got his shirt off and he's, he's crying and singing, we are the champion, my friend, and we'll keep on fighting. And then at some point he goes, wait, stop the music. Stop the music. I want to say something. I want to say something. And the guy running the karaoke goes, finish the song, get the fuck off the stage. And he goes, that's fucked up. <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then he walked up and I was like wait what was that what did he want to say like what was this fucking yeah I think he's a little emotionally unstable yeah, I'll bet. I mean, something strikes he me back he's such a, a emotional he's yeah. very sweet I remember I've, one time Tracy's close. always been super sweet oh he's me, great he's really great guy kind yeah. always funny and honestly I think he's fucking genius his he talks in um, he kind of talks in in like um, in circles but I think it makes a lot of sense like he just I, I think he's just ahead of the curve, and he just talks in such an unusual way that I think people are like, what's that guy's deal, man? Yeah. I remember one time standing in the hallway at the cellar, and I had to light someone, and he was between me and the light, and he was just comedy, man. Like He was just going yeah. on and on about how this is what it's at, and, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, I got to... I gotta light this guy. Get out of the way. <laughs> you just would not stop talking. Mm-hmm. And everyone's like, why don't you What's the light this? anyway? <laughs> yeah. Who's to tell you when you're done comedy? <laughs> There's so yeah. many great stories about that guy. I just remember whenever he would hang out, like back when he was just doing SNL, I remember like if we were hanging out at Boston Comedy Club. He, if he was around in a social situation, there's always one comedian that would go, You ever try to talk to that guy <laughs> it's always some guy was like man i don't i don't know what that guy well it's one of my favorite things ever i said and christine loves us because it's true he came up like what? something happened i don't know where he saw me that was like good i don't know, maybe came down when i was like headlining at caroline's or something and just happened to see that i was there it wasn't like he came to see me and but whatever it was he saw me he was like man jay look at you now man i remember when you came to me when you first came to new york showing up at my doorstep being tracy help me out help me out look at you man look where you at now and i was just like i was like yeah dude that's it's fucking crazy right he goes man i knew it though when you came tracy tracy help me man help me put me on man put me on look at you now dog it's great it's beautiful and i was like yeah and the person i was with was like you, I think it was Christine. Was it you? It was, so, Christine yeah. was like, Tracy helped you out from the beginning. I go, I don't know what the hell he's talking about. <laughs> and he doesn't think I'm somebody else because oh, he knows dude. who I am. <laughs> dude, he's just created a thing in his head. I'm like, no. In fact, because here's the thing. It's not that he thinks I'm somebody else because nobody did that. Nobody did Nobody that. showed up on his doorstep and went, Tracy, Tracy, get me on. It never happened to anybody. Dude, I, one step, one step. So great. He tells you a history that you don't have together. Mm-hmm. Remember, I was almost your step pop, but me and your mom broke up because we didn't see eye to eye politically. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah, dude. I just yeah. say yes. You're I just almost go, my dad, dude. Absolutely, yeah. dude. That was crazy. Then we built that car together, though. Yeah. That's right. What was like a Thunderbird? <laughs> yeah, we built a Thunderbird you together. Train. <laughs> Took forever you to get all them train? parts. I couldn't find them parts forever. Even crazier is the, uh, he knows that there is a comedian named Craig Gass who does an impression of him. Mm-hmm. And then when he sees me, he just thinks I'm a different person. <laughs> oh, dude, I love you. Oh, like, he'll be like, yeah, what's up, Craig? Or no, he, will, he won't say my name. He'll just be like, hey, He just knows what's you, up? yeah. And I've had people right in front of me go, uh, hey, you know Craig Gass does the impression of me? He goes, mm-hmm, he's making a living, right? He's making a living. <laughs> and then I'll be like, hey, what's up, Tracy? And he'll be like, hey, that's my Bobo. That's my Bobo. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah, dude. I fucking love that guy. But yeah, dude, most, most of the people who... He always has a different taste take on something too i remember when i was like i was talking about this at the stand one night and i was like yo how nutty is it because he was like he was like, like you and kev used to come up from philly to get you know he remembered all that and i was like yeah he goes i go it's crazy because it's the first time he's getting ready to do the garden i was like you're getting ready to do the fucking madison square garden dude he goes i know right <laughs> and he just sounded down i go what's wrong he goes 
I hate when I hear that stuff because only way to go is down now. It's like he's always seen the negative. Like, wow. <laughs> that's interesting. Like, Dude, but I just had a weird on. take on it right away. She's like, oh, the pinnacle moment. Now what? You're like, Tracy, you like, never would have said that when I was sleeping on your couch 13 years ago. <laughs> yeah, come on, man. Come on, man. Where's that guy who I like, came two years ago? <laughs> who gave me mustard yeah, for my you hot right. dog? You right. I need to get back there again on that doorstep where you, you showed up. Hug, <laughs> I just How's had... your mom doing? She's still all right, though? I know she don't like me. Her eye working? <laughs> I don't know if he ever if he ever talked to you in euphemisms. I remember uh, the first time I met him, I uh, I said, hey, I'm a stand-up comic. I saw him at, at Saturday Night Live, and I was like, I just want you to know that uh, my girlfriend and I think you're the funniest guy on the show. And he's like, yeah, you a stand-up comic? And I go, yeah. He goes, what you doing on, on Friday? And I go... On what? He goes, on Friday! And I go, I don't know, what am I doing? He goes, you open up for me at the New York Comedy Club. And I was like, oh shit, are you serious? I had nothing, this is like 1998, 99. I was like, dude, I had I planned my whole week around, I'm opening for Tracy Morgan this weekend, I do the show, his crowd's nice to me. It was at the New York Comedy Club on 25th or 26th, whatever it was. And then um, uh, afterwards, he's at the bar and he goes, Craig, what you drinking? And I was like, oh, shit. Uh, can I get a Corona? And he goes, yeah, how you like this? And I go, how do I like this club? And he goes, no, how you like stand-up comedy? And I go, oh, I'm I'm head over heels in love with it. And he goes, yeah, you got to be like Bruce Lee in the six-foot kick. And I go, <laughs> the what? And he goes, you don't know about Bruce Lee in the six-foot kick? They say when Bruce Lee kick you, you go back six feet. Mm -hmm. That's why when people like Tracy, how you living? I'm like, I'm six foot kicking it. <laughs> I'm six foot kicking it. And then he got nose to nose with me. And I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? Dude, I'll tell you what's interesting about him too. Like watching, I got to watch some cool, not cool, it's like interesting, like kind of fascinating moments of him when I first, and I think maybe only once or twice, I, I used to open for a lot of people. Caroline's was a cool thing. When I got in there, they like really worked me. And uh, Tracy was one of the people I opened up for. And it was at a time where he was, they kept coming back to him, like, you know, and it's like, it's like, rah, rah, and doo doo are here. You know what I mean? <laughs> Dookie yeah. Balls and Ned. And it was like, all these people were showing up, and he was just like, just put them over. And he was like, telling them, like, to seat him in the room, or like, they can come back after the show or something. And him talking to me in the back about a reel, he was like, it's this thing now. Like, he's like, all, like, I'm doing great, like, in the world of, like, Tina Fey's and whatever. But he's like, it's not like, when this happens, when I do a show here like this, he goes, all these guys come out, and it's like, if I don't make them have like a like a like a rock star or celebrity night yeah like they go back and say i'm fucking corny and lost my hood and right. all this kind of wow. stuff it's like he was just in a weird place he was like and these guys will come in though and fuck up you know what i mean he's like yeah. they, they don't know how to act and they're gonna come in here and fuck up and then everybody wants some money is asking for something and i'm like yeah and then i watched it all happen no wow. shit the guys come in there and he goes man i'm just until i can get my foot right man <laughs> i can't really be working which you know and it's like Oh, uh, hit me up on two. You know, on Tuesday I'll be whatever up in Harlem. You hit me up or something. It's just like Jesus. It seemed like a nightmare. I remember at one of those shows, he started to talk about growing up uh, that there was a guy in his neighborhood called Blind Clarence, and some <laughs> he was deaf. Some dude, some dudes in the audience went yeah. And he goes, blind Clarence. And he had this amazing story about that he lived in the hood. There was a blind guy named Clarence who got robbed on the elevator um, in their apartment building. And then two, three weeks later, and he starts to describe, and this is 100% true, and I know this from growing up in a, in a deaf family. Everyone in my family's deaf. He said, when you take away one of your senses, all your other senses become supernatural. And, it's like, <laughs> and that's, that's true. That is 100% true. My mom always had like a sense of smell that was greater than yeah. mine. You know, she always like- She could see through walls. <laughs> Yeah. So I taste your lies. So Trace, Tracy describes that blind Benny is in is in the elevator and he smelled the scent of the guy who robbed him and just started wailing on the guy oh in the elevator. Because wow. all your other all your other senses become supernatural. Dude, so my, my brother in law's family, um, his whole family was deaf too. Really? I mean, both your parents were? Both my parents and my sister. Your sister, yeah. No mm -hmm. shit. Wow, dude. Yeah, none of the kids were except the parent. That's which is how I ended up doing voices because I couldn't learn how to talk 
from my family. I learned how to talk by watching TV, and I copied all the voices I heard on TV. So, Whoa, so every man. grade, it was some whatever his new favorite show was. He goes, uh, second grade, he spoke exclusively like Captain Kirk. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, in third grade, he was ma'am and George Papadopoulos. Uh, yes. I'm going to call your parents. <laughs> Go ahead and try, but they won't hear you. Do what you got to do, you big dummy. Let's <laughs> <laughs> ah, coming. Uh, Craig Gass, everybody. He's going to be performing at the Comic Strip Live in New York City this Thursday, November 30th. And Sunday, December 3rd, uh, making fun of the band Kiss and telling some old stories and fun shit uh, that's before and after their final shows Friday and Saturday. Catch me. Uh, I'm going to be there on Saturday. Me and Robert Kelly, if, uh, come and say hi. It's in Madison Square Garden, everybody. But Craig is going to be again at the Comic Strip Live in New York City Thursday and Sunday this week. Check it out. Craig is absolutely hilarious. Check out all of his tour dates and get tickets at Get Gas, G E T G A S S, getgas.com. Mike Fenoya special, Don't Let Me Down at youtube.com slash at Mike Fenoya. And New Year's Eve, he's going to be headlining Comics Mohegan Sun. For tickets and tour dates, go to mikefenoya.com. Uh, I, well, where's Bobby? Let's get Bobby stuff in there. Bobby's going to be in Dania Beach, Florida, December 15th and 16th. After that, Fort Wayne. Night two shows only. Saratoga Springs of Wisconsin. Bobby's coming back tomorrow. He's going to be on the show for the next um, two days. We're going live this Thursday. RobertKellyLive.com. <laughs> Holiday show is already sold out. And I am going to be in Houston uh, with Mikey, actually. That is next weekend. Can't wait. Uh, after that, Providence, uh, Providence, Rhode Island. Pittsburgh. That's right. Home Homestead, it's called. Uh, Pittsburgh for New Year's Eve. I know, though. Uh, New Year's Eve weekend. Tickets and tour dates, bigjcomedy.com. We'll be right back. Probably say goodbye. Maybe not. You know, life's full of little challenges. If you're satisfied, quite life's little Single barrel barbery. Pick up a delivery. Care of Anita Diamond Stud Earrings. Diamond Stud Earrings. Order with... It's just been so busy, and I'm sure the cost is out of our budget. Well, Jen told me that they got a $500,000 term life insurance policy from Ethos for less than $23 a month. All online, with no complicated forms, and no medical exam. All they had to do was answer a few health questions. Wait, no medical exam and all online? I know, right? It's not easy to think about, but if something happened to you, James and I would be... Okay, I get it. Let's get a quote from Ethos right now. Wow, you were right. There's no medical exam. And Ethos makes... Stream Street, God damn! That's crazy. Thank you, Jed. Is that how you like for it? They do, my music is terrible. Oh, it's just, it's not fair, is it, boy? It's not fair. Like, what have we done to deserve that? What have we done to deserve that? Um, hey, Catfish, how are you? I'm trying to think if there's any news to talk about this morning. Um, a big thank you, I guess, for all the love on uh, Friday. We should address that. But thank you for the love. We managed to save the stream on a stream of 13 streams in a row with the big goal. We're going for 14 today. I can't believe it's still going. It's actually crazy. Um, 
But our days on when we're going to be live, um, I did end up taking yesterday as an all day off, I ended up I needed it. Uh, but I'll be live today, I'll tell you how I'm going to be live tomorrow, we'll be live Tuesday, we'll be live Wednesday, we'll be live Thursday. Although this weekend comes the second I'm not I won't be here, I'll be live. 